All right. <clears throat> I'm going to call this meeting of the Plan Commission to order. Uh, Madam Secretary, when you have a chance, could you please read the roll? Mr. Akerson. Mr. Fell. Here. Mr. Fitch. Here. Mr. Hopkins. Mr. Otto. Here. Mr. Storr. Here. Mr. Trail. Here. Mr. Turner. Here. We do have a quorum. Are there any changes to the agenda? All right, approval of minutes. We have minutes uh, from the June 9th, 2016 minutes of the uh, regular plan commission meeting. Um, any motions in regard to the minutes? M motion by Mr. Storr. I'd like to. Oh, you have. Speak to the minutes that contains an error. Okay. We can uh, get this on the table and then correct the error. And so was, was that a motion? Sure. <laughs> Mr. Storr. So moved. Can I get a second? Okay. Mr. Trail by a whisker. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, now, corrections. Uh, I took the liberty of uh, looking at the frequencies that Mr. Bull. Could you point to the page number? I'm sorry. Page four. And um, toward the bottom of the page, Mr. Trail asked what frequency the uh, Verizon antennas would use, and Mr. Volz answered PCS, AWS, and LTE. Took the liberty, uh, uh, Mr. Trail wondered about whether they would penetrate buildings. Mr. Volz replied that none of these frequencies would penetrate. And uh, out of curiosity, I looked up the frequencies, and they all appear to have either bands or some components of their bands will penetrate buildings I just as a just as an FYI I, I think the purpose I, I, the purpose of, of the minutes difference. is to accurately capture the testimony do you think it actually I mean is it a misstatement well, uh, I mean it may it may not be factually true it's not factually true but but was it a is it an accurate reflection of the testimony that happened at the meeting I can't speak to that. In, Mr. Uh, Trail, in your re recollection, is that an accurate? I didn't find it in minutes that seemed at odds. Uh, with the, t the actual Obviously, testimony, yeah. yeah. Context sure, to get all the sure, of sure. I thought the minutes were, were inaccurate. So, so let the record reflect that the minutes are accurate, even though they contain a, a, some testimony that is an error. In your opinion, is an error. But there will be no change to the minutes. <coughs> so if we could get a uh, uh, voice vote. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes as written. I, that, that's what happens on a voice vote. Aye. All right, all those opposed? The ayes have it. The minutes are approved. Now, any communications? I, I will point out that uh, uh, Ms. Pearson was passing out uh, in the packet for the, uh, the, one of the cases tonight. There was an error, and she passed out an accurate version of the B3U uh, usage uh, regulations. So hopefully, if you haven't gotten a, a copy of that, they're in the back. Just want to clarify, it's also the description sheet. It has a few of the development regulations and just a an official description of what the district is like as well. In the packet, it was the the description sheet was B3. It was meant to be B3U, so correct. that being the yes. one we passed on. Yes. Um, continued public hearings. We have uh, two uh, public hearings that are continued, and uh, according to the uh, agenda, they will continue to be continued. Uh, we've got plan case number 2286M16 will be continued to October 20th, 2016. And plan case uh, 2287M16 will be uh, continued to that same date also, October 20th, 2016. So now uh, we come to, uh, we don't have any old business, so we come to a new public hearing. This is plan case 2289M16. A request by Alex Ruggieri on behalf of Tecton Group LLC, Series Corner North, to rezone 11 parcels totaling 2.42 acres, located at 802, 804, 806, 808, 810, 812, 814, and 816 
West Clark Street and at uh, 406 and a half and 406 to 408 North Lincoln. They're gonna, the request is to rezone from a, uh, a R4 medium density multifamily, B2 neighborhood business arterial and B3 general business to the B3U general business university zoning district. So Mr. Marks, when you're ready. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a brief description of the site, of the, the zoning and the current usage, uh, the scope of the site. I'm going, going to then mention the um, part of the comprehensive plan and the proposed uh, district for rezoning and the application. And then I'll go to the, uh, some of the analysis followed by the LaSalle criteria. So I'll just kind of start off by explaining the site to give everyone a proper um, understanding and idea of the properties being considered because it's somewhat large. Uh, so the request is for 802 through 816 West Clark Street, uh, 406, 406 and a half and 408 North Lincoln Avenue. Uh, those are, you'll see on the, the map, those are all the properties that are shaded. Uh, they are zoned three different zoning classifications. The two properties to the, to the north near the intersection of Lincoln Avenue and University Avenue at the southeast corner uh, are zoned B2. And then there are five properties on the southwest part of the property that are zoned, I'm sorry, the top properties are zone B3. The five properties to on the southwest, on the west side of, of the subject properties are zone B2. And then the four properties on the bottom right are zoned R4. Um, the B3 properties comprises of three <coughs> different buildings uh, which have been used, which are which is a vacant commercial space, as well as an alterations business, uh, some professional office space, and storage space as well. Um, the buildings that are all in the B2 and R4 properties are, it comprises of one apartment building and uh, single family rental houses uh, all along West Clark Street. So basically, uh, there's also a vacated alley that runs to the center, so it's residential uses on the south side of the block and then uh, commercial uses on the north side on the north of the block north of the alley of the vacated alley uh, it should be noted that there's a you'll see a railroad that cuts through there um, through the northeast corner the properties just on the other side of the railroad on the northeast corner of the block are not under consideration for rezoning those do not uh, those are a different property owner they are not part of this application Uh, starting in the upper left, you'll see that is at the intersection of Clark and Lincoln uh, facing northeast. The, if you go to the picture in the upper right, to the picture in the bottom left and the bottom right, that is proceeding down Clark Street towards the east, just to give an idea of what the single family houses, uh, the rental houses look like. Uh, in the upper left portion of this slide, that is a vacant lot at the corner of BUC and West Clark Street. That is the southeastern portion of the subject properties. The picture right next to that is curving around, uh, heading northward and then on BUC and then turning into that vacated at the, the vacated alley. You'll see it's a, you'll see where the old right of way used to exist and some of the commercial buildings that are used for storage. And then the picture on the lower left is further down 
the vacated alley uh, heading westward. And then the picture in the lower right is actually turning around. That's another building on the property, on the northern portion of the subject properties. Mm -hmm. And then this is facing uh, the commercial properties on the northwest portion of the subject properties from the intersection of Lincoln and University. That's the vacant commercial space right there. And some, the parking lot. Also the alterations business in the background. Uh, this is the this is just a current land use map. Uh, towards the north, you, there are buildings that are part of the Carl Hospital uh, campus, as well as uh, those vacant spaces that are part of the same block but not part of the rezoning application. Um, towards the east, you will also see. part of the church, uh, St. Patrick's Church, as well as more buildings associated with uh, the Carl Medical Campus. Towards the south, you will find more single-family homes, uh, apartments, and, vac and uh, a few vacant, vacant lots. And then towards the west, you will find mixed-use um, commercial professional office space, commercial space. You will also see some apartment buildings. I'm sorry, the zoning towards the west is B3 and B3U. Uh, the zoning towards the north that I mentioned with the Carl Medical Campus is MIC as well as Medical Institutional Campus as well as B3. Uh, the zoning towards the south with some of those apartment buildings and single family homes that are mostly rentals, that's R4, medium density, multiple family residential. And towards the east, uh, those buildings that are uh, with Carl Hospital and parts of the church, those are MIC and B3. For the subject properties, the entire, all the subject properties are given in the comprehensive plan, the future land use designation of community business, which is in the comp plan is described as uh, community business centers are designed to serve the overall community as well as the immediate neighborhood but are less intense than regional commercial centers located along principal arterial routes or at major intersections. Community business centers contain a variety of businesses and service uses at scales and intensities that make them generally compatible with surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, they're designed to encourage planned unit developments to create a variety of uses and to transition intensities to adjoining neighborhoods. Design facilities to permit uh, pedestrian, bicycle, and transit access, as well as automobile traffic. Um, it's also worth noting that this is, first off, this is the future land use map, or future land use designation map, as indicated in the comprehensive plan uh, towards the, you'll see where it indicates residential and multifamily, institutional campus mixed use, et cetera. Uh, it's worth noting that the comp plan also makes note of the intersection at Lincoln Avenue and University Avenue. It describes that intersection as it it makes mention uh, it makes note of promote as gateway to University District through architecture and urban design of mixed use redevelopment. So the comp plan does make a mention of promoting that intersection as acting as a gateway of sorts through the the development and physical form that uh, exists on. Uh, both sides of those intersections, of, the, of that intersection, singular, excuse me. Also wanted to describe just briefly the uh, B3U zoning district, which is the proposed uh, district for the MAP amendment uh, from the applicant. The B3U district is described as um, a district intended to provide areas in proximity to the University of Illinois for a range of business and office uses to meet the needs and persons and businesses associated with the university. The district is also intended to provide areas for high density residential uses to ensure an adequate supply of housing for persons who desire to reside near the campus. The businesses and residential uses may occur as mixed uses in the same structure. The development regulations in this district are intended to allow buildings which are compatible with the size and scale of the university's buildings. Um, it's, gen it's somewhat of a district that's encouraged for 
as a as as it as it states, uh, university oriented development, but also um, developments that are mixed use. It sh should be also noted that there are slight differences between this district and B3. Uh, some of the parcels along the University Avenue corridor are B3, as well as two of the northernmost parcels on the subject properties. Uh, the main differences between B3 and B3U, um, the FA, the, the allowed building footprint is about the same, the height is the same. Um, the, the main distinction is there's a slight difference in uh, the required side yards, uh, five feet as opposed to 10 feet. The other distinction is that the B3U district is uh, slightly less permissive in some of the allowed uses that B3U allows a few less uses than B3 does. Um, you could summarize those as some of the, like say a, a gun shop, pawn shop, as well as uh, some vehicular related uses like auto sales or a car wash. So the applicant is requesting to rezone all of the subject all the subject properties from B3, uh, B2, and R4 to a uniform zoning district so that it may be redeveloped and it can be marketed to be redeveloped. Um, the, when a property is proposed for redevelopment or a, a property owner is trying to seek a you know, new construction or a new use on a property, it makes it more complicated when there are three different, three different zoning classifications uh, across the property. It, you have three different sets of permitted uses as well as three different sets of development regulations which have varying degrees of sort of building footprint, the sort of setbacks, the sort of uh, permitted uses, et cetera. The applicant is requesting uh, the, de a classification of the B3U district for, uh, for one, for a consistent district, but also because of uh, the sort of redevelopment possibilities that it would allow for a community business designation in the comprehensive plan as well as a, gate, uh, a gateway intersection as described um, at that intersection. So for the purpose of, of marketability as well as uh, consistency for the, for the chance to attract a redevelopment, that's the reason the applicant is requesting B3U. Uh, in, in an analysis of the application, uh, the question is whether the all the subject properties are appropriate to be rezoned to B3U or not. Uh, for one, a B3U designation would be consistent with the community business, I'm sorry, B3U district would be consistent with the community business designation as uh, described in the, in the comprehensive plan. Uh, B3U would allow a potential mixed use development as also uh, encouraged under the community business designation. It would also be consistent with the language uh, encouraging a gateway to, towards the university as described in the comprehensive plan. So from the, the future land use aspect, uh, there is um, consistency with the proposed district and what the, the map uh, prescribes. It would also represent contiguous zoning. It's, it would, there is a B3U district just to the west of the subject property as well. It, the proposal would also represent a uh, preservation of a transitional buffer. The, the community business designation was also meant to preserve the buffer between more intensive uses towards the north of the, of or towards the north or towards the west of either the university or the hospital, but also a buffer between the more residential uses towards the south and the east.
it would also the proposal would also allow for redevelopment of an underused and um, obsolete development pattern. Uh, the building footprints of the in the, of the north the northern commercial properties were once a light industrial use of some sort of oil refining business, which hasn't been which hasn't existed for at least twenty five years. Uh, the space has remained largely the same. The rental homes on the south part of the block have been largely the same, while the area near the university and along the University Avenue and Lincoln Avenue corridors have grown. Um, the area at that intersection of the commercial space is used for storage space as well as vacant commercial space, uh, some un unused park uh, parking space and uh, lots with unused space on them. It's So it could be argued that that is not the highest and best use for uh, an area along two prominent uh, corridors within the city as well as an intersection specifically designated as um, a gateway towards the university. I should also mention, I was going to mention earlier that there was a request to rezone these properties back in 2006 that was uh, filed but withdrawn before it had a chance to go to the hearing. The request was a little different. It included uh, some of the properties on the south side of Clark Street, but that application never reached the public hearing stage. To quickly go through the LaSalle criteria, one that the existing land uses and zoning of the nearby property uh, relating to the degree to which the existing and proposed zoning districts are compatible with existing land uses and land use regulations in the immediate area. Um, two um, parts of the subject property is already zoned for commercial purposes and most of the surrounding area is contiguous with the proposed zoning district as well as the uh, po potential allowed, allow, allowed uses that might exist on a B3 district. Uh, number two, the extent to which property values are diminished by the restrictions of the ordinance, uh, the difference in the value of the property as R4, B2, and B3 as it would have if it were rezoned to um, B3. Uh, it would, a uh, redevelopment would be more would be more enabled uh, with a with a suitable zoning district as as well as a consistent zoning district for all the subject properties uh, and the property values could potentially increase because of their enhanced marketability uh, although we we always state that um, that is not a professional appraisal of any sort um, and any any sort of this discussion to the specific property values is speculative but the third and fourth criteria, the extent to which the ordinance promotes the health, safety, morals, or general welfare of the public. Number four, the relative gain to the public as compared to the hardship imposed on the individual property owner. The questions here apply to the current zoning restrictions. Do the zoning restrictions promote the public welfare in some significant way as to offset any hardship imposed on the property owner? Um, the proposed zoning wouldn't harm the health, safety, morals, or general welfare to the public. Um, the proposed rezoning does preserve the buffer <coughs> between mixed use and commercial space to the north and more residential to the south. Um, it also sort of rectifies the three different zoning districts that's, that converge over the subject properties, allows a consistent zoning, removes that hardship of trying to re redevelop of amongst three different districts. Um, Number five, the suitability of the subject properties for the zone purposes. The issue is whether there are certain features of the property which favor the type and intensity of uses permitted in the, either the current or the proposed zoning district. Uh, as mentioned uh, previously, the gateway intersection, as well as just the intersection of two major commercial corridors of University Avenue and Lincoln Avenue, as well as um, the community business designation as prescribed in the comprehensive plan. And the sixth criteria, the length of time that the property has been vacant as zoned considered in the context of land development in the area and the vicinity of the subject property. Um, the One of the properties on 
the southwest corner or the south, um, the far southeast corner is vacant. That was a house that was single family house that was demolished between 2000 or 2005. I uh, couldn't pinpoint the exact date it was removed. Otherwise, uh, all of the buildings have existed in their current form for the last, uh, at least the last 30 years. So. Uh, there was some neighborhood feedback from people who expressed concern or were uh, somewhat uh, voiced some uh, strong concern or were opposed to the proposed rezoning. Uh, some of, many of them are here tonight. I'll let, I'll, they will probably have the chance to, uh, they'll probably be describing their concerns as well. Um, I'm sure they will, yeah. Well. Wasn't meaning to state the obvious. Just for the record. Sure, thank you. Um, so, with with the evidence and the analysis of that's been presented thus far, in in this case, the staff recommendation uh, for the plan commission is that the parcels be uh, recommended for uh, get the, that the plan commission give the city council a recommendation of approval for the proposed rezoning of the subject properties from B2, B3, and R4 to um, B3U. So with that, um, do you have any questions that I could answer or anything I could clarify? Thank you, Mr. Marks. Any questions for Mr. Marks? Mr. Trail. Sorry, uh, I have a couple questions. Uh, there's an apartment building um, also that you didn't have a picture of. When was that built? That was built at least 20 years ago. You're referring so to the- it's much newer than the 30 year that's being thrown around at everything there is at least 30 years old. It was built, it was built at least as of 1990. Um, the farthest our aerial photographs that we have immediately accessible go to 1988. Um, I have several questions related to LaSalle. Um, first of which is staff stating here that in essence that if we were to grant the rezoning your analysis says we would not be incompatible, we would not be in violation of the LaSalle criteria by doing so. No. Or are you saying that the LaSalle criteria when applied compels us in some fashion to grant the rezoning? The LaSalle criteria doesn't compel towards a rezoning, but the LaSalle criteria is a test for whether properties are suitable for rezoning or not, or that a proposed rezoning would be su suitable. And what's provided is the staff analysis. Should you, as a as a commission, have other uh, things or changes you would like reflected uh, in the record for the LaSalle criteria? That's certainly something that you could discuss. Okay. Um, all right. Sorry, scribble notes in the margin. I'm trying to read my handwriting. Um, what other zones are considered by Urbana to be compatible with community business, what other zoning, other than B3U? That would depend on some of the descriptions of the zones as well as the, the, range, of inten the range of intensity of use that uh, community business would, would match necessarily. Probably, w I, I think it's safe to say that it wouldn't necessarily be compatible with R1 or R2, nor would it necessarily be compatible with IN1, or uh, those are kind of on the different ends of the spectrum. So you might, you could argue that some of the, the districts that are towards the, kind of the middle of the spectrum that, that incorporate uh, the dense use as well as some of the ones which accommodate the mixed use um, might already exist, such as B3, or uh, B2, R4, those are, I mean, B3, B2, and R4 are the existing uh, 
zoning designations of the subject properties, those aren't too, those don't stray too far from. You're saying they're not incompatible with a future designation of community business in this area? Of just a, the just of the in the in a back zoning isn't out of step with the idea of a long term plan that this would be computing. I will point out that um, R four as the multiple family zoning district doesn't really allow a lot of commercial uses, which I think community business is more the focus. Of course, is on the business uses, so uh, that might be where it it strays a bit. But um, we don't line up things with. You've got the comprehensive plan with its general concepts and then we have the zoning and they don't always match up exactly it really depends a lot on context okay I think that's all I have for you. thank you for the questions mr. Otto on the uh, LaSalle criteria uh, it's the extent to which property values are diminished by the restrictions of the ordinance uh, I, I gathered that your consideration was only of the subject properties and not of adjacent properties? Are you to consider when you apply LaSalle to just the effect of the rezoning on the subject properties or the effect of the rezoning on property values generically in the neighborhood? Uh, generally, it applies to the subject properties. I, I don't think it distinguishes whether it apply whether that criteria applies to the surrounding property values um, and I'm sorry you're referring to number four number two number two um, in looking at the zoning description sheet am I correct in saying tavern or nightclub would be allowed by right in a b3u without any requirement for public hearing or input or liquor store I would have to check the table of uses but um, that is correct that yeah. is also a permitted use under the existing b3 zoning district uh, a liquor store of course would have to go through a liquor license process which does involve a public hearing but the store itself does not so are there any limitations on hours for example so uh, could there be, tw I mean, some of these uses, uh, fast food, drive-through, 24-hour, could have a pretty material impact on the residences on the south side of Clark Street. Um, are there any restrictions there on, on sort of hours and this sort of thing, businesses that would? The zoning ordinance doesn't necessarily restrict hours of operation for businesses. Uh, there might be in the city code, but the zoning ordinance doesn't restrict from what time of the time of day that different types of businesses can operate. Okay, thank you. Any further questions for Mr. Marks? Mr. Falcon. This is sort of a technical point, but I think we, at least I want clarification. We have this listed as different addresses in three places. So, for instance, on the agenda, it's that 408 and 408 North Lincoln. On the first part of our packet, it's 406 and 408. And then in the next paragraph, it's 406, 406 and a half, and 408. The it's trivial. I think we all know what we're talking about, but I think we need well, some sort of clarity for the record. Yeah. <laughs> in the, the legal listing, we what you have with those those three properties, those are the the two two northernmost properties on Lincoln Avenue, and then the, the property to the east of that along the railroad track. With those, you have three parcels, uh, two pins, and one address. And in different different places, we found the, the the parcel on the far right along the railroad track was what is designated as 406 and a half. Uh, at one point, it, the parcel at the far northwest part was designated as 408 and then the parcel right below that on Lincoln <coughs> Avenue was designated as 406 so I understand that might be confusing what we were trying to do was um, just communicate that it included all those parcels depending on so that there wasn't any um, so that there was any confusion that it did not include the, the subject properties so I it might have created some confusion but the 
we we're just trying to communicate that it on, no matter what record you were looking at under the city if uh, that property was listed as 406 408 that that was a property being considered for rezoning so for the record it is all of them as the chair stated when he read the case he did add in all of the addresses if I remember correctly great thank you for the clarification mr. Turner I'm just, uh, <coughs> just curious here on page five in the discussion it says that the b3u district is more restrictive than b3 zoning district in, in that it does not allow taverns pawn shops gaming halls or as many vehicular related businesses is that incorrect it the, is inc it the, does a lot it does a lot of taverns it does the tavern is a right. that was a that is an area yes okay okay thanks M mr trail sorry i finally deciphered one of my <laughs> scribbled notes <laughs> Uh, you said at one point that B3U preserves buffering for the resident nearby residential area. We were saying the proposal would preserve buffering. There's still R4 zoning that exists across the street on Clark Street as a buffer between residential uses towards the south and B3U uses towards the north. And what it also does, if I may add, um, B3U allows as permitted uses more residential uses than B3 does as a matter of right. So it is somewhat of a, a hybrid zoning district in that it allows some of those commercial uses, but not all of them as allowed in B3. But it also allows more of the residential uses. So it's a, it's a bit of a hybrid between commercial and residential. So it does in some ways uh, help to encourage residential there more so than a B3 zoning district would. I'm not sure if that. Is it Urbana's intent to encourage residential along university there? Well, that is um, certainly in line with the B3U district, of course, in that it encourages uh, planned unit developments, mix of uses, ones that would help to serve the university as well as those beyond. Um, is there any other B3U zoning along University anywhere else in Urbana? Uh, let's check University. There is some across the street along Lincoln. Right, down toward the University, but not along University Avenue, which strikes me as an exceedingly pedestrian, unfriendly um, avenue that doesn't seem to be about to change that character anytime We'd soon. We'd have to look at the larger zoning map to... There's none shown along University Avenue. There is a small pocket on Nevada Street, farther to the south, of course. But this would be the first B3U in Urbana, in Urbana along University Avenue. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any further questions? Mr. Storr. Uh, how many <coughs> of those single-family residences on the south side of Clark are owner occupied most of the properties on the south side of Clark are owned by the same property owner as uh, as on the north side of Clark so I would have checked but I don't believe um, any of them are owner occupied any further questions thank you mr. Marks I should state the applicant is also here to answer uh, any questions if you indeed so. Um, let me, before we get into uh, public testimony, let me just run over the rules for a public hearing. Uh, we will uh, ask the, uh, the staff has presented a summary of their case. We'll ask the petitioner if uh, he would like to make a statement and then take questions from us. Uh, we, other proponents of the proposal may be heard. Opponents then will have a chance to speak. And if I could ask for just a show of hands to get an idea of how many of you think you're going to speak to us. Bless you. <laughs> okay, given that number, I'm going to limit you to five minutes apiece, um, and um, if you, you could plead for more time if, if you're right in the middle of a point that you think is particularly strong. Um, then uh, after the opponents, uh, others may be heard. There may be additional comments by uh, city staff. Uh, the petitioner then may uh, rebut. Uh, the, uh, I also want to point out that any opponents can ask questions of the petitioner through me. So you can essentially cross-examine by asking me a question and I'll relay it. Um, 
then uh, after the petitioner presents a summary of his case, uh, then uh, he gets the last word, and then we will close the public input portion and go into deliberation, discussion, and possibly vote. Mr. Chair, I should also point out that I believe the applicant has the opportunity to cross-examine as well. Okay. Sure. Um, so, if the uh, petitioner would like to address us, uh, please come to the uh, front and state your name, if you would. Sure. I'm Alex Ruggieri, and uh, very pleased to be here before the uh, board tonight, uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, I don't have a, uh, uh, a whole lot of uh, bells and whistles to present other than the fact that uh, we spent a lot of time working on the application and uh, I think that uh, we have very capable staff that has reviewed the application and uh, looked at it uh, from a professional point of view um, and their recommendations uh, I think are uh, solid and based on good footing. The, 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 the bottom line as far as uh, uh, the owners are concerned uh, is the, the property is way underutilized and has been for years. Um, there's a lot going on right now with the university and with uh, the, the city in terms of growth. We've got a kind of a chicken and egg situation here. You can't really get developers interested in coming to that corner because of the disparate uh, zoning uses there. The idea is to create a, con uh, a uniform zoning that would then help us to attract a development. Uh, and then um, the idea is then if once we did that, of course, we'd be back to the city. Um, uh, there would be community input and in whatever is proposed uh, and uh, so we'd, we'd get a, a chance to uh, approve or uh, uh, augment or whatever we want to do with any development that would be proposed there. But right now we can't even attract a development uh, because of the, the, the disparate zonings that are there. So that's the whole idea. Uh, if you look at that corner, it is a gateway uh, to the university. Uh, I have been in this business for 40 years and I've traveled all over the country and I haven't seen a better example of contrast between um, what a gateway property can look like and an underutilized property in a gateway if you go there and you stare at that corner and you see what, what's on, on uh, uh, the left side or, you know, what, and what's on the right side. They're just totally, uh, totally uh, in contrast to one another. And I think that we have an opportunity here to uh, uh, make a difference, and we're hoping that this zoning change will encourage that kind of development. Great. Thank you, sir. Uh, any questions for Mr. Jerry? Okay. He's thinking about it. Okay. Apparently not. Right, you got one? Fire away. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a lot of questions about it. Yeah, for all intents and purposes, um, how long has the current owner owned all these properties? Uh, well, I don't know the whole history. Uh, it's been an assembly uh, that's been going on for 20 or 25 years. Uh, you know, over, the, over time, one or two properties are purchased. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I can't tell you exactly how long each property has been owned, but uh, it's been a while. <coughs> but and you don't have a particular development plan. You're no, not there is no You're development a, plan. Current is not intending to develop it themselves. There, there is no development plan, that, and that's the whole point: is that um, they intend to sell it to someone who will then develop it. They would uh, try to attract a quality developer to the site with this new zoning. That developer, of course, would come back to the city with their proposal, and you would have every chance of input as to whether or not you wanted that development or not. And perhaps their own zoning request. They may, but uh, I, I don't think that they would. I mean, I think that we're solving that problem now, and that's 
the whole idea is to be proactive as a community to attract development. Anything's possible. I suppose they could come in and ask, you know, anything's possible. But the likelihood that they would do that, I would think, would be very slim. In fact, the higher probability is that we would be able to attract a quality developer to the site with the new zoning, whereas right now, that's just not happening. Pretty good. I do have a, a question. If do you have any experience? We're, we sort of will get into this in discussion, maybe considering other alternatives that would be consistent with the comprehensive plan. Do you have any experience with? Uh, I assume B three, you've got experience with. Uh, what about B two neighborhood business or any of the other zoning types that would be uh, consistent with the plan? And do you have any feeling about whether any of those would be more marketable for you than the others? Well, um, I think to answer your question, um, the reason we um, decided to move forward with this petition is because we believe that the B3U is the most marketable for a gateway property like this. Um, in real estate, and I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, but um, there's a concept of the highest and best use. And um, over time, that changes. Uh, the highest and best use, you know, in the 60s might have been a gas station mm -hmm. on that corner. That might have been the highest and best use. But over time, um, having a gas station on every corner is not really a good idea and not very uh, conducive to the neighborhoods and all of that. So what then is the highest and best use? And um, the marketplace determines that but zoning allows for it. So right now, if you look at all of the different um, zoning uh, or, or uh, allowed uses in this zoning, that gives us the opportunity to attract a quality development um, in, in orders of magnitude in terms of uses. So I don't know the answer uh, of to what is the, high, the best and highest use, but I do know that the zoning allows us to attract the, you know, that the market will decide that and the zoning allows us to attract the market. Great, thank you. Any further questions? Nope, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, so now, uh, is anybody else wish, wish to speak in favor of the uh, petition? Does anybody else wish to speak in opposition to the petition? Just raise your hand and I'll call on you and you can come up and talk, uh, give us your point of view for a, for a soft five minutes. You know, we, I won't cut you right off. There's not gonna be an egg timer. Sir, if you could just come forward and state your name. I'm Daniel Folk. I live at 807 West Main in the Main Street Historic District, just to the south of the, of the subject properties. Um, I came to oppose the proposal, although I'll admit now that Mr. Otto has raised the prospect of a new liquor store and tavern in our neighborhood, I may have to think this over. Uh, the, the, this is a mean little property, and it, it's it is indeed a gateway to the university, but it's also the intersection really of the railroad in Lincoln Avenue, not of university in Lincoln Avenue. There isn't any access off university, and that does, I mean, I, I don't think you can cure that with, with zoning. It's, it's just got a problem. It doesn't have the same access that most arterial corners do. Uh, my, my second concern is I look up and down uh, Clark Street, I took a ride yesterday. The commercial businesses on the south side of University don't extend through to Clark Street in the area, except for right across the street on the west side of Lincoln, where the new building where the bagel mm -hmm. shop is. Uh, and they have a parking lot that is accessible off Clark, but it's accessible immediately off Lincoln. It, there's no commercial traffic that extends all the way back down Clark to the west. And if you act on this as it's proposed, I think you can look at Clark Street as now becoming a commercial street and having commercial traffic and, and potentially even Busey having commercial traffic on it, which 
they don't seem to be designed to do and brings commercial development awfully close to the single family uh, street where we live. And the final thing I'll say about this is the B3U designation. University district is supposed to have buildings, uh, I think, commensurate in scale and design to university buildings and so mm -hmm. on. And, be a district that's associated with the university, but extending that zoning east of Lincoln to parts of the community that are more associated with Carl and downtown uh, and are blocks away from the nearest university building seems to me a pre precedent we might not want to set. So, Any questions for Mr. Polk? Mr. Otto. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have the B2 zoning in front of me, uh, and maybe we could throw that up. But I'm wondering, I'd like to have your response, since there, portions of it are B3 currently, uh, portions of it are um, B2. Mm -hmm. If the property were uniformly B2, <coughs> so right now four of the lots facing on the Clark are B2, would that mitigate some of your concerns? I expect that if this is B3U, uh, what we're going to see is a, another apartment building. Um, that's my biggest concern, I suppose, is that um, that's where we end up. I guess when I look at this, what makes the most sense to me is that somehow we can get the same kind of development on this side of I mean, it's not as good a lot, but maybe we can get something on this side of Lincoln that we have on the west side of Lincoln. Something that borders on Lincoln, something that has access a little bit off Clark Street, but doesn't extend the commercial activity all the way down Clark would be the best outcome. Something commensurate with what's going on on the west side of of the street. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? In the back. Oh yeah. And if you could state your name when you're through uh, signing in. Uh, Randy Kangas, 804 West Main Street. Um, so if you look at it, we're right next to the church. We have what well, used to be three lots, now two lots, um, that corner Busey and Main. Uh, or if you think of it, it's the uh, big brick building with a um, fountain in the front. Uh, we have an apartment building behind us. Um, it, uh, you've already mentioned uh, several of why I would have concerns and would oppose at this point. Um, when it, this is a very awkward property. And so um, I'll go through a list of dot points that are probably incoherent and not put together well. But uh, if the, the prime driver is economic development, um, in B3U, you can have not-for-profits. Um, so maybe Carl would put a not-for-profit there or something like that. Um, maybe that would be a good place for a mosque. Uh, I, I, I have no idea, but if it's really going to be economic development, there are some uses in there that would actually deduct from the tax base. That um, rail line is active. Um, I don't know the schedule. Uh, but when my windows are open, um, they, they come by 3 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's uh, random to me. So when you look at this property, you might say that it's for, uh, a main corner with uh, uh, going in both direct north, south, and east, west. But the truth is it would be very difficult to come in off of University Avenue. And it would be very difficult to come from the um, head south on Lincoln Avenue because you would be uh, turning into the traffic, which is very, uh, which is heavy in the morning and afternoon when the university employees are headed out. So 
the way I see it is, as Dan just mentioned, is you really have one access point. It's, it, it's not a clean property. It's a very awkward property. Um, Main Street is uh, endangered. Uh, this is a street that Abraham Lincoln walked down. Uh, our house was built in, we believe, at least 1869, if maybe not earlier. Um, we have an apartment building right behind us. Um, thankfully, it does not have a window that rolls into our backyard, uh, but that certainly would become an issue as things get higher or as light gets higher. Um, the, the Clark Street, you should probably walk the Clark Street and Busey. Um, if you're going to increase the density, those streets need to be completely done. Um, for example, Busey does not have curbs. <coughs> it just rolls into the grass. Um, and uh, it, it's pretty, uh, especially Busey is, um, uh, gets uh, holes in it now. So it would become a traffic problem. So when I look at this realistically, how are you going to redevelop it? Develop it? If, if you're basing it off of traffic patterns, you're going to really increase traffic on Busey and Clark, and there's a problem with that, and it does then impact Main Street and all the rest of the properties. Um, trying to look at what else I had. Uh, uh, as Dan mentioned, you're, you're really setting a precedent here. You're jumping the Lincoln uh, Avenue corridor with higher density that is not on, uh, not on the uh, east side of Lincoln Avenue. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm having a little problem. It would be really great to see even the ruminants of some kind of site plan and transportation plan that makes sense. Otherwise, I think you've created a big blockage and potentially safety hazard in that corner. Questions? Any questions for Mr. Kangas? Mr. Otto. Other than leaving the zoning as it currently is, I mean, are, are there alternative zonings that would cover the complete parcel that you think would be compatible with the neighborhood? And that the would truth is, I've been out of town, and um, I just came from a funeral, so I have not gone through the list of all the zonings that would make sense. Um, but certainly, to me, if you ask me what's going to happen, the, the only thing that at the moment appears to my limited mind is it becomes some form of housing. Um, maybe you get a little light retail, like coffee shop or something there. But even that, to me, is circumspect. And then you have the problem of setbacks and all of that. Uh, I did ask, and I'm, I'm not sure that staff knows, how far the, the new setbacks would have to be from the railroad. Um, I don't know if the railroad has uh, a master plan that says in 25 years it's going to be gone. Um, that would be interesting. Um, so it's a very awkward property, and I don't have a good answer to that sitting today. It would be really nice to see, like I said, some kind of basic site plan of how this would work. How, what can you actually fit in there that makes site make, make sense with the current transportation patterns? Just because you get a lot of cars going by, that doesn't mean people stop. I mean, how long has Huey's been sitting there? The fact that I still know it as Huey's, and how long has that been sitting there vacant? Um, you know, th that's, a, that's a very heavy intersection. <laughs> big, big plot of land. Not used. It's going to be shortly, but. Anything further? Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? We've got movement towards the back. Hey, go ahead. All right, if you could state your name, please. I'm Phyllis Winters and Williams. What was that? I'm Phyllis Winters Williams. Okay. I'm at 810 West Main. I can't write and cheat down this. I suffer the same affliction. <laughs> All right, well, welcome. Thank you so much. 
Um, I think it's important to note that you've got several ex-plan commissioners sitting in the audience. I'm one, Randy and Carolyn Baxley. Um, just as a side note, we've had tired bottoms in your chairs before. <laughs> I, I'm really troubled by the community business designation and this kind of yoga position that staff has taken um, to kind of find community business in B3U. Community business is more like what's sitting there right now in the magic needle. It was there with the English hedgerow and to a certain extent with even brownfield sports. I mean, we did have thriving businesses right there and the English hedgerow was just excellent. So was brownfield sports. But you have owners that got sick or died and businesses move on. That's the nature of small business. Um, community business is not that coffee shop that's in the glassed in corner of a big, huge apartment building. So, um, I guess if, if there was any, I'm worried though about, we can't, uh, Mr. Ruggieri said that, yo, of course, we'll be back with the plan. It doesn't work that way. What we, what we say is okay, what's allowed, that's what's gonna happen or that's what's going to be marketed. I think it's a stretch to market it. It is an odd lot, it always has been. And I'm kind of disappointed that for as long as this family has owned this lot, that they've done so very little to make it any prettier, even though it is the gateway to the university. And the head of that company is a retiree of that university. He could have at least planted some flowers at some point and chose not to. I do worry about then if this plot is marketed successfully, will all of the, the parking, the heavy equipment, will that then move across Clark Street to our backyard? So, um, it was mentioned that he has taken a financial hardship. The hardship, that's not just the owner. And that's not necessarily that it doesn't mean that he's, he's lost money sitting here and now we're gonna help him get it back. He could have developed quite a bit right there and chose not to. Remember, this zoning got here as a matter of a bunch of hearings. It didn't just always exist this way. R4 is there because it was the comp, he wanted to upzone it many years ago. Clark Street was our buffer and then around 2006, it was up zoned to R4 from R3 because Mayor Satterthwaite said, we gotta give him something. So, um, they've, they've had opportunity. And it's not, that's not the criteria. The hardship is shared. I, the way I read LaSalle, I, I just feel like there's some gymnastics going on with that criteria. And above and beyond all of that is the comprehensive plan for whatever municipality. That sets the tone. And what you say in that comprehensive plan, where we say community business all through that block, that sets the tone. And that's what you really should follow. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Williams? Mr. Otto? Same question I've been asking. Is there any uh, zoning for the complete parcel that you would think would be compatible with the neighborhood and the comprehensive plan? You know, I'd take an Aldi in a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> I'd take Aldi in a heartbeat. It's hard though, I, I think it's tough to get one of those businesses that really does close up at eight o'clock and open at nine in the morning. I, I'm not sure if there's a zoning that, that does that. Um, we don't expect boutiques on the first floor of all these old houses. I, I guess I'm wondering, um, do you think that it makes sense to have a unified zoning for the whole parcel or is some- If, if that zoning is not so intense, I mean, otherwise, I'm just not sure if, Surely there is enough of an, a minimum lot there that B3 was permitted when it became B3. I, I guess, 
I'm, I'm really not sure. Um, but I would think some sort of like B1, B2, if we had to. I mean, I'm just not sure what it is comparable to across the street. I really don't want to see B3U come across. The next nibble, if you let this happen there, the next nibble won't be on Main Street. It'll be on Nevada. That's exactly where you're going to see it next. So keep it over there. All right. Anything uh, further? Does that kind of do it, Daniel? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'm Carolyn Baxley. I live at 510 West Main. Um, the first thing that I want to say is that we're feeling rather besieged on Main Street. Um, the case that got continued is at the other end of Main Street, and it is an attempt to upzone property that we spent years trying to get downzoned. And hopefully we'll be able to work something out with the owner on that case. We're in discussions with him, we being the neighbors. Um, because it used to be R5 and we got it down to R2 and none of us have any desire to see it go back to R5. So then at the other end, the 800 block residents are very fearful for what's going to happen if this rezoning is allowed to go through. Um, the owner has spent literally years um, chipping away uh, trying to get this area up zoned so that his property values would be higher and he could sell it to some mega developer um, despite all of our concern um, as phyllis pointed out the city has um, allowed b2 at the uh, western end of clark street on the north side but at least it's still r4 to the um, to the east and to the south um, I'm not going to take ask for a show of hands, but if you haven't driven down Clark Street yet, then you need to continue this hearing, because the way we see it, as it's our neighborhood, and you know this owner has gradually, you know, acquired property with the specific plan to speculate on the land. He has no plan in place. Um, <coughs> There's nothing being shown to say, okay, this is not going to be so bad, you know, this is what we want to do here. Um, so you can understand why the residents are fearful. Um, I hope you can anyway. I have some real issues with competition with three of the comprehensive plan goals. I was on the plan commission when the downtown to campus plan was drafted and approved by council. Um, and one of the things that we were adamant about was that Lincoln Avenue be the line of demarcation between anything connected to the University of Illinois and the rest of Urbana. So B3U, that U at the end bothers me. Um, <laughs> I would hate to see, as Phyllis said, anything, any precedent set that would allow you know, other encroachment to the south along Lincoln Avenue. But I have problems with the comprehensive plan goals number 2, 4, and 16. The language in them, you know, I, I keep hearing compatible with the overall urban design and fabric of that neighborhood. Goal 4, promote a balanced and compatible mix of land uses that will help create long-term viable neighborhoods. And then goal 16, compatible with and enhance the existing community. There's nothing about this case that's going to enhance the lives of the people who live in the historic district on Main Street. The more density that goes into the north, the more they're going to be pressured. Um, you've already heard from uh, Randy and Dan that you know this is a real problem property. 
It always has been. The egress is terrible. Um, you've heard that already. Um, the only way that a big development in this area would survive is to have egress off Clark Street and increased traffic. I mean, the brick street would probably be sacrificed in a heartbeat. And it's one of the only brick streets that we have that survives in Urbana. So I would mourn the loss of that, um, as well as the encroachment into the backyards of these people. But the main point I want to make is that I think it's absolutely um, in total opposition to at least two, if not more, of the LaSalle criteria. And theoretically, the LaSalle criteria is what you're supposed to use in evaluating the legal validity of a zoning classification. Number two, the extent to which property values are diminished by the restrictions of this ordinance. Well, the owner knew the restrictions when he bought the property. He continued to acquire in this area. Um, he had no uh, promises from the city or any um, justification for, you know, wanting to continue to acquire in this area. So if he knew the zoning restrictions, I'm not sure that his property values are diminished um, by our saying to him, we need to have lower density zoning here. Criteria number five, the suitability of the subject property for the zoned purposes. Dan and Randy covered this beautifully. Uh, it's a terrible egress. Um, you've got railroad cutting through it. Um, even if you put the Clark Street properties with it, you still have egress problems all over the place. And I just don't see that it's compatible at all uh, with number five. And then number six, the length of the time the property has been, been vacant is zoned. Well, it hasn't been. Um, it, there's been a succession of commercial businesses in there. And as Phyllis, I think, pointed out, you know, small businesses come and go. They don't always survive for various reasons. As Randy said, just because a lot of people pass by doesn't mean they stop. And, you know, that's going to be true whether it's a big business there or whether it's small business. So, you know, I don't think that there's any kind of justification for granting this because this property has been vacant for a long time, because that's simply not true. Uh, Brownfield Sports only moved out recently, and I believe the Magic Needle is still in the other building down there. So there is some commercial viability here. It may not be of quite the scale that the owner would like to see, but there is viability. And there is viability from the rental properties. As far as I know, they're all rented. And, um, you know, so he has income coming in from all of these properties. So I would like to urge you to think about those things and think about the neighbors to the south and uh, think about a different approach. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, thank you very much. We have a late question. Ms. Baxley. Ms. Baxley. I think so as Dan doesn't have to ask every time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll 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 take it up. What what would you consider uh a more suitable or acceptable uh zoning for this well, area? Well, I was perfectly happy when the university was zoned B3 and Clark Street was zoned R3. You know, I don't think Clark is appropriate for business development. Um, it's a small, quiet residential street, and uh, you know, it's just it does just because this is on the corner of Lincoln and University does not mean that there has to be some giant building go up there. Why not some kind of beautification project on this? Um, I don't think that the current owner is going to do that, but you know, why not some kind of gateway? You know. <laughs> area there that's going to say welcome to Urbana or welcome to the University of Illinois. It doesn't have to be a giant building. Um, and just because he wants to, you know, consolidate all this and, and put up a giant building doesn't mean the land is appropriate for it. I mean, really, if you haven't been out there, seriously, you need to continue this and walk this area because it's, uh, it's a real conundrum. 
but I don't know what to do with it. I mean, I would like to see the density go no higher on Clark Street. That's, that's my opinion. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Sir? Please. Yes, good evening. I'm uh, Pierre Moulin. Uh, so I'm the owner of Fair House on the uh, 600 block of, of Maine. Um, so I came to this meeting with a open mind uh, in the sense that I like the idea of community development and I thought it might be a nice idea possibly to have some nice businesses at that uh, corner of uh, University of Lincoln. But uh, after hearing everything I've heard today, it's very clear to me that uh, there are advantages only for the owners of those properties. Uh, the owners have uh, made absolutely no effort to develop uh, the, their businesses earlier. There were plenty of opportunities to, to do that. And I don't see why extending, uh, why absorbing this area would necessarily uh, make uh, any business plan work very well. I can see only disadvantages if I see, if I read the list of uh, businesses, I see fast food, liquor stores, taverns, ambulance services, mortuaries, and I'm thinking, is this the kind of business that the people who live on the south side of Clark wants, want to see? Is there any improvement in, in their uh, well-being uh, by having such businesses? So I um, think Clark Street currently is a very nice street. I often walk down that street. It's, uh, as people have said, it's a nice brick street and so on. Uh, it's uh, Main Street is still a street with lots of characters that ought to be preserved. Uh, and I'm extremely concerned that if this request is granted, there's going to, going to be again a domino effect and that uh, the entire main street is going to die away very slowly. And I think that would be very sad. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Moulin? Um, Thank you very much, sir. Anyone else wishing to speak uh, in opposition to the petition? Sir. I'll sign in later. My name is Larry Lister. I live at 707 West Main, uh, the only single family house in that, uh, in that block currently and probably forever. Um, all that predates me. I've been there about 20 years. I've been in Urbana 40 years. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer by trade, uh, so I'm not an architect, but I'm around uh, the build. I, I work in the building trades and, uh, and have for a, a quite a long time. Um, when I when I heard what was going on with the site, I thought, uh, similar to uh, the last speaker, I thought, well, you know, it's not it's not the greatest thing, as it sits, um, and uh, I walk through there almost every day, and it's uh, but the railroad is is a, a really severely limiting factor to uh, any 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 build out. I've I've worked in labs that were built next to railroads that had incredibly poor performance just because of things that weren't really ac accounted for. So, uh, the, and the other speakers have done uh, a great job of bringing up all the different points and, and uh, it's uh, tough to follow people that are, that, that are as intelligent about this neighborhood and about planning as, uh, as I am. One, uh, one thing that I did notice that I, I don't think was mentioned yet was that on the B3U, and I, I'm guessing I don't know how it goes on if, if anything zoned down lower than that, is that there's no height limits. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, so again, not that that site's conducive to anything too terribly uh, tall because of the railroad going, uh, going through there. But um, that's one of, the, one of the things that I hadn't uh, heard brought up yet. Another one is um, that, that I triple down on or quadruple down on that everybody else has mentioned is that Clark Street and access to that corner is just really difficult. It's difficult. I, I, I bicycle through there. I drive through there also, but it's, it's just, it's, it's tight. It's close to that busy corner. And, and with the railroad coming through bisecting diagonally that, that property, it's, uh, I, I just don't really see where, where, uh, where any, Development other than you know pulling a bunch of resident a, a bunch of you know higher density residential and even then who I don't I wouldn't want to live next to that Randy's Randy's had a 
and and those folks on that side have had a great sense of humor about the railroad because it does come through and it does rattle the house not as much as the heli helicopter does Carl but um, so the height limit was it was an issue I wanted to mention um, also just the the Lincoln Avenue demarcation I've you know lived lived in Urbana a long time I've lived on both sides of Lincoln Avenue and uh, and that's always just been kind of a of a of a of, of a given until fairly recently and and that part uh, had me a little bit concerned I'm not anti development by any means I work in on new construction as a for a living and uh, I'm I'm good with smart development and with uh, and with improvements to things that aren't going to get any better I don't know what to, what that property you know it, it could do I know the owner of the property known him for several years not very well but um, the, the 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 last thing I wanted to mention is that the congestion issue with Clark Street is, and also Busey like um, uh, Randy Kang has mentioned is that you know Busey is is a fairly tight street when you start getting into that area not to mention the fact that you've got to do the railroad crossing as well so Clark Street, and everybody's talking about Clark Street, but Busey too. On Sundays, when the church is in is in service, and now at the, during a couple times of the day, now that that parking lot's being used also by Carl Hospital to the uh, north of of uh, St. Pat's, is that luckily you know the the church services don't cause too much of a consternation, but it, it's a, quite a traffic jam on the, on that corner. People sitting, waiting for other people to pull in, pull out, just because of the. The, uh, the narrowness of the streets and the you know, lack of curb and everything like that. So anyway, I, I, I obviously then come, come in opposition. I don't do this very often, but uh, I was surprised this one uh, made it through the acceptance or at least the staff recommendation phase. So I thought I needed to come in and, and uh, weigh in. All right. Well, thank you. Any questions? Oh. You want? <laughs> don't I would love a dog park there. No. <laughs> <laughs> CRE, um, all right. Actually, uh, uh, Carolyn mentioned some, something that I, that I was going to mention. I know this isn't really a, a zoning uh, question, but as far as use of that property as a gateway, I love the gateway concept. I, I, I would like almost anything other than what's there, almost being the, the, the caveat. But uh, that's kind of a direction I think that would be a, a nicer long-term thing to do. I know it's a little bit beyond the purview of the the uh, planning commission to designate something like that but all right thanks well thank you very much any Sorry, any no. further in opposition nope all right well thank you all for your uh testimony and participation and mr ruggieri would you like to uh address this again or address any of the points that were made i'll do my best eloquent and very smart people here and uh, I have to respect their opinions and I thank them for coming and expressing uh, their concerns. Uh, those are the kinds of things that are very important I think in any hearing like this and uh, so uh, but with regard to uh, the application um, we, we stand by our submittal and uh, we I mean Quite a few people brought up, there's this problem, there's that problem. I, I couldn't agree with them more. I mean, some things you can do something about, uh, other things you can't. Uh, you can't necessarily move the railroad. Um, and uh, there are certain issues that you just can't deal with. One of the things we can deal with is the zoning. And um, I offer that as a solution to what do you do with this property other than return it to a dog park or you know, uh, green space. So uh, I, I appreciate every comment made. Um, I, I know a lot of these people and uh, respect them. Uh, uh, someone said, uh, 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 you know, Miss Ruggieri said we'll come back with a plan. Well, I don't care if we even if we have the zoning, the plan is still going to need to be approved. I don't know what that plan would be. People were cherry picking. Oh, tavern or whatever, tattoo shop or whatever was the worst thing on that list of about 150 things that could go there. There were also a lot of really nice things that could go there. And what we're hoping we can do is create an inviting atmosphere 
for quality development to come to Urbana. And then we'll know what it is. And then we can come back with a plan. And believe me, <laughs> I've been through this before. Those aren't rubber stamped. Oh, it's allowed by right. There's always um, a review, and there's always a lot of discussion, and there's always neighborhood input. And we'll have a chance to say, hey, you know, we don't want the tattoo shop or whatever, or whatever it's the worst thing you could possibly imagine. Or maybe, oh, gee, the assisted living center that, you know, yeah, maybe mama, uh, grandma and grandpa would be great in the neighborhood. I don't know, but they would certainly have the opportunity to do that. If we can just attract quality development, that's all we're trying to do. All right, thanks. Any further questions? Thank you. Uh, one, one question, Mr. Otto. <clears throat> Concern was raised about the domino effect, and if this were granted, then you know soon there would be an application for the south side of Clark, which, if I understand correctly, is owned by the applicant. The same people. That's right. Mm -hmm. Anything you can say? Uh, all fears. I can say is that's total speculation, but it is certainly something that would be a big concern of mine if I lived in the neighborhood. And um, you have complete control as a Zoning Board of Appeals um, whether anything happens on the other side of Clark Street. And the only reason that anything would happen on the other side of Clark Street is if we are successful and we bring in a development that everybody loves not just the owners but the neighborhood and every and everybody loves it and says we want to accept it we want to embrace it uh and uh when that happens um you'll have the opportunity to decide if if somebody wants to do something on the other side of clark street i can't speculate i can't imagine that right now but I, i'm not going to pretend that i you know six months from now somebody wouldn't come in and say hey we want to do this on the other side of clark street um, been through this before, and um, I mean, in Champaign, you know, the neighborhood uh, concerns came out with some of the development that went up and along University Avenue, and the developers uh, came in, the architects came in, met with the neighbors, mano on mano, you know, person to person. They worked out all their issues, they changed their design, they came up with innovative things, they incorporated meeting space for the neighborhood, they did all kinds of really amazing things. And the group went from opposing the project to embracing and endorsing the project. That's the kind of thing we could do here. But first we have to open the door to get a quality developer to talk to. That's all. That's all we're hoping to do. You good? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. I'm going to close the uh, public input portion of the hearing and turn it over for discussion among the plan commissioners. Anybody have a feeling they want to express? Don't start too slow, gentlemen. Mr. Otto, you had some questions earlier. Were you fishing for uh, yeah, I'd, an alternative? Um, I don't have an alternative to propose, but um, I think the speakers in opposition <coughs> had some very cogent points, you know, including questioning the analysis of the Sal criteria and the comprehensive plan. And uh, so that as someone said it's an ugly property not because it's inherently ugly but just because of access issues in the railroad um, and I'm not as convinced that uh, the neighborhood has much of a voice once it goes to B3U there's ways of doing that uh, that they don't have to ask for any other variances mm -hmm. and uh, just do it by right. Mm -hmm. So if we grant the B3U, one should assume that any one of the 200 things on there could be yeah. put on there without the public having any other input. That's correct. And I'm not ready to go there tonight. OK. Anybody else? Mr. Trail? 
Yeah, I guess it seems premature to rezone this. I mean, big hunk of it's already B3, which is exactly what the other properties along University in that area, commercial properties are zoned. Um, it's already, you know, got some denser residential zoning. I'm, it's not clear to me that this property is amenable <laughs> to a single large project anyway because of the lack of frontage along University. So it, it's unclear to me how changing the zoning cures any of those issues if, the, if we decided it was in the city and the community's best interest to do so. Um, and I, you know, it just kind of seems like fishing a little bit, attempting to increase the value of property that the current owner doesn't intend to develop. I mean, it seems like to me the question, the time to, to reach the question of zoning is if someone comes along and says, I have a great idea for this property, here's how it fits in with the community, and here's the zoning we'd like you to do. And I tend to agree, that gives us the maximum participatory leverage at that point. Because this is going to be a difficult, because this, it's like hammer and tongs. You got the university on one side, you got, you've got, um, Carl on another side and you've got a historic district in between almost. So this is going to be a con you know a difficult property to develop under any circumstance and I don't think the current zoning seems like to me is the biggest obstacle. Thank you Mr. Trail. Anything further? Mr. Uh, Bell. One question for staff. A, a developer could come back as a PUD on this site correct with, with yes. multiple zonings on it? Yes that's correct. Okay. Um, I think I think I'm going to agree with Mr. Otto. I'm not necessarily ready to vote on this case tonight. I think I want to study it a little more, but I want to bring up a, a couple points. I think I agree with most of the uh, audience members who spoke that it's a it's a little difficult to me to set a precedent of putting B3U on the other side of Lincoln Avenue. That being said, I also have a problem with, and I'm not trying to be controversial, I guess, but we have a neighborhood here where uh, a developer has spent years and years putting together uh, plots of ground to be able to do something on. And now the neighborhood wants to come in and say, uh, the big bad developer shouldn't be able to do that anybody had a chance to buy any one of these lots so if I have a hard time coming in after the fact a neighborhood coming in after the fact and saying he shouldn't have been able to do that or he shouldn't be able to consolidate these lots if if they don't want that to happen they should put forth an effort to find other people single-family owners that want to buy one of these lots so it's it's to me it's unfair to put uh, to to uh, defame the owner for putting property together when everybody else had the same opportunity to purchase any one of these lots. So they could have done it, and they would, by encouraging or buying the lots themselves, they can prevent this from happening. So it's, and this is happening, as speaking of as a professional, over and over and over again in Urbana. So I don't have an answer for that, but... I find it disconcerting that neighborhoods can come and complain when they had the same right to purchase property that this owner had. So that's it. I'm off my soapbox. Mr. Otto. I, I think that misunderstands the point of the neighbors. I think the point of the neighbors was he acquired those with full knowledge of the zoning restrictions. And what is unfair is that now he says it's a hardship not for me to be able to put a higher level of zoning on those properties. Their point is not it's wrong for him to own them. The point is that every one of those properties, he knew what the zoning was. And it's unfair now to put the neighborhood under the gun by trying to upzone and do a larger development by consolidating the lots, consolidating the zoning. If he wants to own all of those single family houses and rent them, I, don't, I didn't hear anyone question that right of ownership. I think for me the point is not uh, necessarily what the developer did or didn't do, but I think whether this proposal is appropriate for the neighborhood. 
if it's appropriate uh, and inconsistent with LaSalle, if it's consistent with the comprehensive plan. I mean, that's where I'd like to focus the attention. Um, and I agree with you that uh, it's, it's, this is a tough lot. It's a tough area where different things come together. Um, it looks to me like in the past, the zoning attempted to, to strike a balance, to have B3 where it belongs, um, and then to try to have some neighborhood protection as, it, as you move down to the uh, uh, south. Um, I also understand that now that, that results in a hodgepodge um, that probably is difficult to, to do anything with. I, I think I do understand that. Um, and so for that reason, I think I've got to do some more thinking. I have been down Clark Street. I can understand what some of the neighbors were saying about that. Um, we've got other instances in the, in, that are ongoing right now where uh, uh, an up zone is happening in a, in a residential neighborhood. And I don't know if it's, if it's suspicion with this particular developer that's kind of clouding the possibilities. Um, or I, I, so anyway, I don't know about that, but, uh, I, I do think I tend to agree that B3U is not a good buffer. Um, I wouldn't use that word for B3U at all. I think it's got a lot of uses that you probably don't want to see bleeding, uh, towards the other side of Clark street and definitely not towards main street. If there's a, if there's a third way other than leaving it alone or accepting the um, request, then I haven't seen it yet. I think if you look at B2, it's about the same as B3. The most of the lot is already B3 or, or B2. So then you've just got the residential piece. What, what's the value of turning that into a, a B2? I don't, I don't know that there is any. Um, so I got to think about it some more. Well, I think, I think to, to your point, we sort of do have a uh, uh, I don't say compromise, but anybody who wants to develop this lot can come back as a PUD, and then the public has the oh, opportunity to, to yeah. input and argue. And but, you know, this could be, be developed right or, now. Or I, or I totally right. agree. Yeah, Mr. Trailey. I, I, I have to disagree a little with the. I, by its nature, zoning is an attempt is a limit on investor whim. Just because you buy and own a property. If it's zoned in a particular fashion, and zoning was imposed to do this, um, it prevents you from just doing anything you want. Um, to the extent that the, the, they want to do something and they want the zoning changed, right, that's, you know, why we do this. And I, it's perfectly reasonable. Oh, I agree. It's entirely possible that in, you know, 30 years, this is going to turn out to have been a long-term transition to much higher density in this area. Maybe historic district disappears. I mean, they do. It happens. Um, but, you know, I, I haven't heard in this, uh, specifically this one, how B3U helps, does anything, really, even for this area, since there is no plan. I mean, that, if the investor or the owner had a plan and said, hey, there's a great thing I can do, the only thing is preventing me, and I think the neighbors will like it, the whole bit, but the only thing that's presenting is the zoning. I'm, I would be much more amenable to a zoning change. My concern here is I feel like I'm, you know, being asked to make a zoning change sort of in the blind. Well, that's, but that's not really how, how big developers look, look at development because Aldi is going to come in here and say, it's not zoned to do what we want to do. We're not even going to look at it. So we, I think we need to, we need to somehow figure out how to strike a balance between inviting the right kind of development and and balancing that with what the neighborhood needs. And I don't think B3U does it necessarily, but I don't think leaving the way it is does it either. We need to, and and maybe a PUD isn't the best, I don't well, know, the well, most streamlined way do to do it, but yeah. but they have that opportunity. And, the, and that opportunity gives the public the same input they have in this process. To, to object to the use or, or accept it. Yeah, if anything, I'd like to see someone come along and propose an east-west division of this property rather than a north-south, because mm. to me, University Avenue isn't really the, the applicable road here. 
I mean, when I look at it, you see all the B3 right along sure. university, and it was obviously that zoned that way. Um, I, if you were going to do, if you know, someone came along with a zoning request that did it east-west, so we have a Lincoln-facing commercial property and potentially a non-Lincoln-facing residential area or something like that, maybe. But I, B3U, yeah, I, it seems premature unless someone's got a particular plan. Mr. Otto. I want to assure you that the character of the applicant never affects my influence on these decisions. I, I know that. The zoning always goes to the property, sure, not exactly. to the individual. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. And the second point is uh, developers and realtors know how to use options. And it's very, very common to buy a property that's not zoned correctly. You have an option contract that says pending zoning. Oh, yeah. And so I don't think that the zoning is the primary issue here. Uh, and I, I, d I don't like it when we get applications saying, well, I bought this knowing the zoning was wrong. Now I've made my investment, so you have to bail me out. That's what options are for. Anything further? I, Mr. I really, Turner? I, I really don't have anything else to add, I would say, except um, you said that there seems to be a lot of uncertainty here. Hmm. And I think that's what's preventing us from moving forward with this. I think that that corner there, University of Lincoln, I think everyone wants something different there than what's what currently there. Um, and I think that uh, I agree with what what's already been said, um, to be quite honest, that this there seems to be, it seems that we would like something else, some sort of a different option that we don't currently have right now, uh, at least as is presented. Okay, anything further right now? Are there any objections if we uh, continue this to the uh, next plan commission meeting? Unless somebody's ready to make a motion? And I don't sense that. So uh, having said that, we, without objection, will continue this to the next plan commission meeting. Which we could announce is September 22nd. September 22nd. Love to have you here again. Um, so returning to the agenda then, we don't have any new business. Uh, does anybody wish to engage in further audience participation? Do we have a staff report? We don't have a study session, therefore we are adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>